In 1907, a survey engineer laying out the route of what was to become Ontario's development road, the Temiskaming and Northern Ontario Railway emerged from the dense, untamed bush onto the shores of a sparkling glacial lake. Struck by its beauty, he decided the location of the junction of his railway and the planned National Transcontinental Railway. And thus, the site of the future town of Cochrane was chosen. From that chance beginning, there grew a vibrant, spirited, progressive community fathered by the railroad and nurtured and fed by the abundance of its natural and human resources. Even before the stumps had been pulled from the streets, a school had been built, and by 1909, the town could boast of a post office, bakery, hotels and restaurants, numerous stores, two banks, doctor's offices, churches, a number of railway buildings, and a police station. All this before it became a town in 1910. But three separate times, the fledgling community was destroyed by fire, and twice it faced widespread epidemic. And yet the town survived. It grew, flourished, and gained from its experience. For out of its disasters came knowledge, and from the knowledge came change and progress. When it was incorporated, the name Cochrane was chosen to honor Frank Cochrane, Minister of Transportation in the government of the day, whose efforts were important in the establishment and development of the pioneer town. From its humble beginnings when railroad construction workers slept in tents within its confines to the present thriving community, people have come to Cochrane for what it offers, a sense of real community, surrounded by the natural beauty of the Ontario Northland. And they have come for the resources that the Northland offers, land, water, and forests. For over 70 years, man has been harvesting the timber of the region, far different from the hands-on logs of 1907, used to construct the original buildings are the forest products and methods currently in use. From seed to usable product, much of Cochrane's primary industry focuses on the tree. At Birch Hill Nurseries and Blazika's greenhouses, millions of seedlings are carefully tended to ensure that reforestation can guarantee a forest harvest for generations to come. These tiny trees, grown from seeds gathered under the supervision of trained ministry personnel, are planted by specialty contractors and the lumber companies themselves in prepared plantations which are monitored and tended for optimum growth. Mature stands of trees well removed from waterways and recreational areas are gathered by the most modern and efficient of machines and are trucked to Cochrane and neighboring communities. The Norboard Industries Normic Perron Complex is a good example of the modern forest user, employing approximately 300 workers and producing poplar and spruce building materials. Tree parts unsuitable for their own process are shredded and either shipped to paper mills in the area or are used by Northland Power, a newly developed cogeneration plant, which will supply thermally produced electric power to the town and to Ontario Hydro's grid. Another major employer in the private sector is Forche Beverages. This locally owned company was established in 1952 to bottle and distribute Coca-Cola locally because of the available good water. Today, after wide expansion, the company distributes its products throughout northeastern Ontario and northwestern Quebec, as far south as Tomogamy and as far north as Fort George. Farming has been a base industry also since the town's birth, a stable dairy and beef cattle sector and potato production of a quality that has produced two world champions are supplemented by excellent strawberry and market garden supplies for local consumption. Ontario Northland Railway continues its lengthy association with the town. From its very inception, it has brought goods to and shipped forest products from the area and has maintained repair shops and track maintenance crews here. Cochrane is the location of National Grocers, whose northern distribution centre services communities in all directions, making use of both the railway and the major highways in its shipping scheme. From here, the north is also serviced by a major gravel producer and construction company, MJ LaBelle Construction. This major concern has produced the aggregate for the Sky Dome in Toronto and services the building trade from Orillia to Thunder Bay. It has laid much of the highway in the region. Transportation is recognized for the essential service that it is and is supported by many private and government agencies and facilities. Goods may be shipped by rail or air and the town is served by a number of trucking and courier services. Regular passenger service is offered by rail and bus and a modern airport provides twice daily service to Toronto. Direct flights also go north and to Detour Lake Gold Mine, a major producer in the Campbell Red Lake Group. The mine site is located 150 kilometers northeast of Cochrane and is also serviced by road from Cochrane. 
The mine went into operation in 1983 and now employs 365 people. Its annual production is worth approximately $60 million. The town itself is a well-planned community of 4,500 with broad, well-lit streets paved throughout. The many trees and carefully tended yards create an ambiance of comfort and natural beauty. Industrial and commercial lots are available with access to municipal services, as are residential building lots. Development is carefully monitored by the Municipal Council, and services are extended regularly as needs arise. Careful planning has assured that servicing needs of the future will be met. Household services are provided through a local public utilities commission, the existence of which ensures good rates and responsive service. Water from deep spring wells, electrical power, efficient sewage treatment and telephone services are all part of its mandate. Its telephone switchboard is state-of-the-art in design and it offers in conjunction with the Ontario Northland Transportation and Communication System a broad range of communication services. To accommodate its citizens, Cochrane provides a high level of social service and care. As the commercial centre for the farming district as well as its own citizens, Cochrane and its merchants must offer a broad range of goods and services. Three major grocery retail outlets and numerous smaller ones ensure competitive pricing. Family clothing, drugs, home furnishings, hardware, jewellery, gasoline, flowers and home entertainment products are only a few readily available downtown, where a recent revitalization program has created an enjoyable atmosphere for shopping. A newly built shopping mall on the edge of the business district will provide space for expansion and growth of the mercantile community. A 10-year-old 54-bed hospital with helicopter-accessible emergency section, obstetric services and an efficient lab serves the town. A resident surgeon, an anesthetist and a number of general practitioners furnish the best in health care. Two dentists, two optometrists and two chiropractors supplement this care. A brand new daycare centre is operated by the municipality and nursing home, retirement home and senior citizen housing are also provided. With its designation as the seat of the district, Cochrane has been able to afford services to its residents not available elsewhere. The imposing federal courthouse and the adjacent land titles office are a convenience as well as being another of the town's employers. The Ministry of Natural Resources and Ministry of Transportation are also an integral part of our community. Reflecting its pioneer lessons, the town of Cochrane exhibits its spirit of community, caring for its residents and coordinating their efforts. Whether it is in cooperation with provincial or federal governments, or applauding the accomplishments of its local library board, or recognizing the efforts of its many churches, it shows that it is a place where people care about each other and about their community. The existence of four national service clubs in a town the size of Cochrane attests to this attitude. The Lions, Kiwanis, Kinsmen and Richelieu clubs work diligently for the welfare of the community. This caring attitude and community spirit and togetherness is never any more evident than when people gather to have fun. the year, Cochrane affords its residents and visitors many opportunities to enjoy their leisure time. Whether winter or summer, spring or fall, there are always plenty of things to do and available and well-planned facilities to do them in. Summer, with its long hours of northern sun, provides such a wide range of recreational opportunities that one can be busy from dawn till dusk and still wish there were more time in a day. The lake central to the town and surrounded by well-treed rolling green parkland is an ideal location for family outings. A morning of quiet fishing can be followed by a refreshing afternoon swim at the beach with its up-to-date beach house and changing facilities. Here a trained staff of swimming instructors and lifeguards assists in the supervision of young people's swimming activities. For those more actively inclined, a physical fitness trail encircles the lake, composed of a number of activity stations designed to bring the body into top shape.
If your timing is right, you may run into a concert at the Bandshell or view the spectacular Canada Day fireworks enjoyed by visitors from all over the north. Meanwhile, throughout the town, others are busily engaged in their favorite activities. Families are playing tennis on attractive modern courts. Men and women of all ages are involved in slow-pitch softball, played in two parks in town. Young people are playing softball and baseball in organized leagues. Still younger people are playing in safe, planned, multi-activity parks at convenient locations throughout the town. And just at the edge of town, golfers are enjoying their game. The Lee Golf Club is a 3,000-yard, nine-hole course set on the edge of an esker, affording challenge and pleasure to both the expert and the duffer. Within minutes of the town itself, Northern Ontario spreads its welcome mat. Hundreds of sparkling lakes and tumbling or peaceful rivers provide all-season action for the fisherman, hunter, and canoe enthusiast. A 20-minute drive west brings the camper to Greenwater Provincial Park, where spring lakes stocked with trout and wooded private camping areas are the setting for planned summer programs, bird and wildlife observation, and plain family fun. Cottages abound in the area, as the Ministry of Natural Resources has made lots accessible and available on many lakes within easy driving distance. For those wanting the challenge and serenity of recreation in the deeper wilderness, local tourist outfitters provide air service to lakes and rivers in remote areas. With the approach of autumn and its crisp, cool, sunny days, the sport of hunting becomes an observable phenomenon. Both resident and visitor anxiously anticipate the pursuit, either with camera or firearm, of the lordly bull moose, largest of Canada's sport animals and king of the Ontario forest. Equally sought after for sport or for simply watching are the bear, fox, geese, ducks and partridge that are so prevalent to the region. The Agricultural Society's Fall Fair, the most northerly in Ontario, presents the proud efforts of homemakers, farmers, hobby gardeners and craftspeople of the area. Livestock and fowl, garden vegetables and fruit, crops that only the long warm days of a northern summer can produce, bring looks of wonder to the faces of southern visitors. The craft work and baking point out the fact that the creative spirit is nourished and grows in the warm confines of a winter's evening at home. As autumn gives way to old man winter, activities do not cease, they merely change. A modern four-sheet curling break with club room and hall comes with activity five nights and two afternoons a week with clubs for men, women and young people. Weekends see frequent bond spiels and social activities. Bowling, both in formal and in competitive leagues, attracts people also. In the town centre is the Tim Horton Arena. Here, an enthusiastic and active minor hockey association provides leagues for young people of all ages and abilities. A men's recreational hockey league keeps many active, and a figure skating club with professional instructors turns out graceful and accomplished performers. Skiing is also a popular pastime. Cochrane never lacks ample snow, and good use is made of it by hundreds who ski the perfectly groomed wilderness trails of the Cross Country Ski Club. Three trails of varying degrees of difficulty and length are available. The wilderness adventure is not brought to an end by winter either. The lakes of the area offer up their bounty of pickerel, perch, and northern pike to the ice fishermen. The local snowmobile club has constructed many kilometers of well-groomed trails, part of an ultimate network that will stretch across northeastern Ontario. Rallies and races, picnics and poker runs are also part of the organized fun of the snowmobiler. Warmer but no less exciting activities go on all winter long in town. Local gymnasiums resound to the shouts of men's basketball, karate classes, mixed badminton and ladies aerobic and dance classes. A community choir meets weekly to sing and prepare for concerts. Various clubs and groups meet through the winter months, weaving, painting, producing ceramics and taking courses in areas such as conversational French, baking, computer skills and technical subjects. Winter is not a time to hibernate, it's a time to participate. During the course of the year, particular events highlight and showcase the activities with which residents have been so busy. At Christmas comes jolly old St. Nick to distribute treats to the children riding the Santa Claus Express and to listen to their requests for Christmas gifts. The crowning event of the winter and one that makes the season so attractive is the annual Winter Carnival, a week-long celebration of winter and a whirl of activity and spectacle. Again, Commando Lake is the focus, with its trees and bridge gaily decorated in color lights. A torchlight parade culminates there with the community bonfire and sing-song. 
Games and competitions from dog sled races to log sawing and snowboarding involve hundreds of townspeople and tourists. For variety and spice, the town presents an exhibition of local art, children's movies, a lengthy parade of floats and marching bands, a hockey tournament, and nightly dances and entertainment. The crowning of Miss Chimo, the town's snow princess, an entrant to the Miss Northern Ontario pageant, is always a highlight. The carnival's final day is always its best attended. The lake is thronged with people taking part in the fish derby, popular because of the quantity of speckled and lake trout available. Many come to see the hardy souls who, after a steamy and nerve-numbing sauna, brave the freezing waters of Lake Commando for an invigorating plunge and swim. Senior citizens are an active and respected segment in the community. Two clubs with meeting rooms, organized bus tours, and special events like the annual Seniors Picnic keep these golden aged members of the community involved in the activities of the town. Scheduled bus service is also provided. Visiting Cochrane, whether for the fair or the carnival, or for some of the other exciting events of the year, is always a treat and a pleasure. Most visitors to Cochrane come in the summer to take advantage of the fact that it is a key locality in the James Bay frontier and the jumping off place for visiting Ontario's Tidewater. The Polar Bear Express, a day excursion train to Moosonee, departs from Union Station in Cochrane six days a week. Taking a northerly route along high ridges between major tributaries of the Moose River system, the Bear, as it is known, conducts its passengers through the most untouched wilderness of the northern frontier panoramic views of virgin forest land and stretches of untamed water are highlighted by glimpses of man's attempts to harness the vast resources of this area. Detraining in Moosonee, passengers embark on a sea voyage of a few minutes across to Moose Factory Island, Ontario's oldest settlement. There, St. Thomas Church, the Hudson Bay store, a tour of the island, museum and exhibitions of the work and crafts of the native residents are to be seen. The return to Cochrane in the evening is not merely a train ride back. Food and beverages are available on the train, and professional musicians entertain the passengers with music and song. The excursion is a full day of adventure, history, and entertainment. Numerous motels cater to the needs of the traveling public, and a wide range of restaurants takes care of all tastes, both formal and informal. For those who like to camp during their holiday, a municipally operated campground and park is situated on the edge of town, within walking distance of the station. This facility, Drury Park, offers shower and washing convenience, as well as firewood, running water, a children's playground, and shore fishing. To spend a day or two seeing the town is well worth the time. Adjacent to the station is the Cochrane Museum, which is housed in authentic retired rolling stock of the T and N O Railway, forerunner to the Ontario Northland. Close by it is a small and obtrusive structure, which was once of considerable significance to the pioneers of Cochrane. Built in 1909, it is the housing to the communal well, to which residents would flock once a day upon hearing the call, water, water, echoed through the town. One may also visit the Norboard plant to see on a conducted tour the production of poplar plywood. A trip to anywhere is not complete without souvenirs. These are offered for sale at gift and craft shops in the downtown core. The overwhelming souvenir that you will take home with you, however, is the memory of friends you have made here. Whether it's traveling on the bear or camping in our parks or visiting a local restaurant, you will share the camaraderie and warmth that is a vital part of life in the north. This friendship is the kind of souvenir that you will keep for the rest of your life. Only a sampling of the annual and special events and activities which delight and entertain both visitor and resident alike can be provided here. Complete and up-to-date information regarding dates and locations is available through various municipal and provincial publications and is readily at hand at the Board of Trades Tourist Information Hut located at the highway entrance to the town. Chimo, the town's mascot and symbol, stands here greeting all who enter. And his welcome is a sincere one, because he is offering you the opportunity to share the benefits of living in a small, vibrant, progressive community in northern Ontario. In an age of disappearing agricultural land, air pollution, superhighways, high-rise accommodation and concerns about water, Chimo offers quality life in a community whose air, water, land and friendly people are not merely part of its legacy from the past, but the gift that it presents to its future.
The future is here. Consider its possibilities. Come to Cochrane.